Okay, so now that we've talked about TLS and SSL, let's talk about disk encryption. Now, disk encryption is actually something that was not really difficult to do, but sort of out of the reach of normal desktop computers for a really long time. Although there have long been ways to do encryption of files, and to a lesser degree, maybe entire disks, as we get faster processors, certainly encrypting the entire disks and being able to encrypt and decrypt on the fly without affecting performance is something that certainly comes with within reach. And it's a feature that shows up in most modern operating systems to one degree or another. Now, these days, we are going to look at a couple of ways here of doing disk encryption. I want to tell you about one of them first, and it's not the one I can show. I can't really show the other one either. So with Microsoft, their Windows system have this program called BitLocker. A BitLocker requires either Windows Ultimate or Windows Enterprise. I don't happen to have either version, so I can't really show it to you, but I can tell you that BitLocker has ability to do entire disk encryption and they use AES for the encryption cipher. And the thing about BitLocker is that they use a feature that comes with most modern systems, particularly laptops. They'll have a chip in them that's called the Trusted Platform Module or TPM. The TPM chip is part, what it does is it stores the keys that allows the operating system to be able to access the disk through this encryption and decryption process. And they use a pretty strong encryption cipher, which is AES, but you have to have one of the couple of different versions of Windows in order to be able to use BitLocker. And it's one of those things you would normally run in an enterprise. And so that's why they include it in on its enterprise version. Now on the Mac OS side, they have this thing called File Vault and you'll see in the system preferences on the security and privacy, if you go to File Vault, you can turn on File Vault. Now, I, if you have the little button that there says turn on file wall, then uh, you can turn on the file wall and it would ask you about setting up keys and it works similar to Windows BitLocker. Now, PGP happens to have the ability to do disk encryption and you can see that in the case of this, you burn the system. They've got a package called GDE Crypt, which is a GUI that allows you to map and mount a created encrypted volume. So I could run GDE Crypt and it would help me set up the process of encrypting the volumes that I've got on my system. Now, disk encryption is a really good idea because when you are working with clients, the data is normally very sensitive. So as I mentioned, you can always use things like BitLocker and Windows Vault or other such softwares for disk encryption. So what I mentioned before is now not only possible, it's very much a reality with current operating systems. Now let's talk about scanning. Now scanning uh, refers to the use of computer networks to gather information regarding computer systems. And network scanning is mainly used for security assessment, system maintenance, and also for performing attacks by hackers. Now the purpose of network scanning is as follows. It allows you to recognize available UDP and TCP network services running on a targeted host. It allows you to recognize filtering systems between the users and the targeted hosts. It allows you to determine the operating systems in use by assessing the IP responses. Then it also allows you to evaluate the target host TCP sequence numbers and predictability to determine the sequence prediction attacks and the TCP spoofing. Now network scanning consists of network port scanning as well as vulnerability scanning. Network port scanning refers to the method of sending data packets via the network to a computer system specified service port. This is to identify the available network services on that particular system. This procedure is effective for troubleshooting systems issues or for tightening the system security. Vulnerability scanning is a method used to discover known vulnerabilities of computing systems available on a network. It helps to detect a specific weak spot in an application software or the operating system, which could be used to crash the system or compromise it for undesired purposes. Now, network port scanning as well as vulnerability scanning is an information gathering technique, but when carried out by anonymous individuals, they are viewed as a prelude to an attack. Network scanning processes like port scans and ping swipes and return details about which IP address map to active live hosts and the type of service they provide. Another network scanning method known as inverse mapping gathers details about IP addresses that do not map to live hosts, which helps an attacker to focus on feasible addresses. Network scanning is one of the three important methods used by an attacker to gather information during the footprint stage and the attacker makes a profile of the target organization. This includes data such as organizations, domain name systems and email servers in addition to its IP address range. And during the scanning stage, the attacker discovers details about the specified IP addresses that could be accessed online, their system architecture, their operating systems and services running on every computer. Now, during the enumeration stage, the attacker collects data, including routing tables, network user and group names, simple network management protocol data and so on. So now let's talk about intrusion detection evasion. 
So before we get into IDS evasion, let's talk about what exactly is an IDS. Now an intrusion detection system or IDS is a system that monitors network traffic for suspicious activity and issues alerts when such activity is discovered. While anomaly detection and reporting is primary function, some intrusion detection systems are capable of taking actions when malicious activity or anomalous traffic is detected, including blocking traffic sent from suspicious IP addresses. Although intrusion detection systems monitor network for potentially malicious activity, they are also prone to false alarms or false positives. Consequently, organizations need to fine tune their IDS product when they first install them. That means properly configuring their intrusion detection system to recognize what normal traffic on their network looks like compared to potentially malicious activity. An intrusion prevention system also monitors network packets for potentially damaging network traffic, but where an intrusion detection system responds to potentially malicious traffic by logging the traffic and issuing warning notification, intrusion prevention systems respond to such traffic by rejecting the potentially malicious packets. So there are different types of intrusion detection systems. So intrusion detection systems come in different flavors and detect suspicious activities using different methods. So kind of intrusion detection is a network intrusion detection system. So that is NIDS is it deployed at a strategic point or points within the network where it can monitor inbound and outbound traffic to and from all the devices on the network. Then there is host intrusion detection system that is HIDS which runs on all computers or devices in the network with direct access to both the internet and the enterprise internal network. HIDS have an advantage over NIDS in that they have may be able to detect anomalous network packets that originate from inside the organizations or malicious traffic that NIDS has failed to detect. HIDS may also be able to identify malicious traffic that originates from the host itself as when the host has been infected with malware and is attempting to spread to other systems. Signature based intrusion detection system monitors all packets traversing the network and compares them against a database of signatures or attributes of known malicious threats, much like antivirus softwares. So now let's talk about into IDS evasion. Okay, so now let's talk about IDS evasion. Now IDS is an intrusion detection system as we just spoke about and is there to detect exactly the types of activities that we are engaged in sometimes. And sometimes you may be in, called in to work on a target where your activities are known and should be known by the operators or the operations people involved in monitoring and managing the network and the idea being not only do they want to assess the technical controls that are in place, but they also want to assess the operational procedures and ensure that the systems and processes are working the way that they are supposed to be working. Now when you are engaged with a target that you are in full cooperation with, you don't need to do these types of evasion tactics. All these techniques may be actually avoided, but if you're asked to perform an assessment or a penetration on a target where they are not supposed to see your activities, then you need to know some different techniques to evade detection from an IDS. So we're gonna talk about a couple of different things that you can do. So one thing that you can do is manipulate packets to look a particular way. Now for this, there is a tool called Packet. So Packet is a really good way to actually manipulate traffic and by actually manipulating the contents of a packet. Like you can specify the destination and source. So it's a really useful tool to set up packets, look a particular way. One thing it can do is allow you to spoof IP addresses. So I could set a source IP address here that was something completely different from mine. Now if I'm using TCP or UDP, I'm not gonna see the response back. And in this case, TCP, I'm not even gonna get the three-way connection made because the responses are going to go back to the source IP. But what you can do is, in addition to spoofing, you can set up particular ways that a packet may look. Like changing the type of service or by changing the fragmentation offset, or by different flag settings that may allow you through an IDS without maybe getting flagged. And it may also allow you through a firewall. Now it's a slim possibility, but it's a possibility. Now another thing you can do is use Packet to generate a lot of really bogus data. And what you might do is hide in the noise generated by Packet. So you can could create some really bogus packets that are sure to set off IDS alarms. And then you can run some legitimate scans underneath and hopefully be able to get some responses different from mine. Now if I'm using TCP or UDP, I'm not gonna see the response back. And in this case, TCP, I'm not even gonna get the three-way connection made because the responses are going to go back to the source IP. But what you can do is, in addition to spoofing, you can set up particular ways that a packet may look. Like changing the type of service or by changing the fragmentation offset or by different flag settings that may allow you through an IDS without maybe getting flagged. And it may also allow you through a firewall. Now, it's a slim possibility, but it's a possibility. 